This is Jennifer Follett with CRN, and I'm here with Mike Crosby of NPD. Mike, good to see you again. Thanks for joining me. You bet. Great to, uh, great to be here with you, Jen. We've had a number of conversations uh, throughout last year. Uh, this is our fourth one now, beginning off 2023. So we're looking ahead. We're going to look at what kind of growth opportunities and maybe some challenges the channel should expect to see in 2023 and the few years past that. So maybe right off the top, just start with telling us what NPD's expectations are for channel growth coming forward. Yeah, and it, and again, great opportunity to really share some of this insight with you because it's it's certainly valuable, certainly important because we know we're up against some uh, some challenges near term. We know in 2023, uh, we're certainly seeing the uh, the economy uh, cooling, and we're seeing that really by design by the by the Federal Reserve. We're trying to get inflation back in line, but it also means some interesting things from a from a B two B landscape as well as from a consumer landscape. Both on the B two B side. Clearly, we're still seeing while expectations or declines on a year-over-year -year basis in 2023, modestly down about 2%, you're actually going to see an interesting dynamic go on. One is where you may see budgets overall be constrained a little bit, but from an IT perspective, you're actually going to see IT budgets either stay the same or actually increase. And I think what's really happening is being kind of unique in the sense of mid-size and enterprise companies are really starting to understand the dynamics associated with productivity and what technology really brings and where you know you're going to have to do more with less the investment's going to continue forward on technology because clearly their goal once and for all really is to, to maximize productivity and so that's likely to continue now with that what's going to be interesting is it's probably going to see a little bit of mix shift you're going to see less in it hardware traditionally and you're going to see more expansion within cloud within software and certainly within managed services and that's a little bit unique and even though IT hardware still is the dominant. It's still roughly 60% of the overall mix. Um, you're actually going to see that shift just a little bit in mix, certainly in 2023. But then as we've talked before, um, hopefully this, this contraction that we're going to be able to see uh, a little bit closer here in 23 is going to be fairly short-lived. And it really sets us up for some nice future growth climbing out in 24 and 25. So I know you had identified computers and consumables as a couple areas uh, that maybe would drag down some of these sales opportunities. Those are areas that actually skyrocketed, perhaps unnaturally through the pandemic as people shifted to work from home. Is this just a reset of what the natural level should have been? Yeah, I mean, your description is absolutely uh, uh, correct in that we did see some overdriving of these certain select categories and certainly saw that investment accelerate during the pandemic. And now a little bit of it, it's just a little bit of a rebalancing. Now what's interesting is a lot of the devices that went in in 2019 and 2020, they've now aged effectively that it's roughly around that tech refresh. So when you start to see this, yes, there's gonna be some correction short term, but ultimately as we land into 24 and 25, you're likely to see a pretty high opportunity for tech refresh. It's also gonna time out really nicely with Windows 10 is going to be sunsetting in 2025. That's also going to drive some additional tailwind really around hardware growth and, uh, and hardware refresh. So it's a little bit of a timing issue, certainly a little bit. I won't call it a reset, but certainly a little bit of a lull in 23. But again, expectations are very good about a climb out in 24 and 25. Specific to 23, you mentioned software and cloud as areas that are going to be still pretty strong. Or is that uh, a continuation of what we've seen or is this people taking things to the next, you know, phase two, phase three of their projects, or is there still companies out there that hadn't really gotten their, their skin in the game yet, even though so many jumped on that through the pandemic? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, we've seen a couple of different things. One is certainly with the early stage of, of the pandemic, we saw a lot of major digital transformation efforts. And some of those first efforts that were part of that were really more of that moving physical to digital. And what you've seen now, that's almost like a phase one of this. Phase two now is more optimization and really looking at a future growth opportunity and how best do I leverage technology, both cloud, software, and again, add that other element of managed services into that future kind of operating model that, uh, that companies are looking to do. So it's really, to your point, it's really a continuation. In some cases, it's actually even an acceleration. And even though we're still showing really good growth on a year over year, it's still down a little bit because we're expecting a couple of different things to go on. One is on cloud, as we're starting to see shifts fundamentally change with regard to hybrid and work from home. You're, as your economy is slowing, 
you're seeing large corporations even look at rescinding some of these work from home um, alternatives. They're bringing people back to the office in a pretty aggressive manner. What that also means is you've still got now on-premise that either needs to be refreshed or be operating simultaneously. So it's, what's going to be interesting for companies, specifically mid-size and enterprise, is they're now going to have to operate effectively three models. On-premise model and all that that entails. A hybrid model where you have one or two days where people are going to be working remotely, but still fundamentally it's a modified uh, on-premise. And then you have people that are full remote. So now it's it's added significant complexity to that, and that's going to continue to be a, a nice driver of incremental spend as companies continue to really work at how best do I maximize productivity, whether you're in the office or you're remote or you're hybrid, but also security, as we've already talked about in previous discussions that we've had, security continues to be paramount. And it's something that people are really critically needing to understand, not only needs of today, but also ultimately where their needs are going to take them in the next three to five years. So big drivers. Given the the more complex uh, nature of dealing with all these three models, are there particular security segments that you think are going to be hotter than others? You know, I really, I think from, from a security overall, I think the biggest piece that I saw that probably is the, the biggest driver of this is again, is that that remote user and specifically around just uh, maintaining a high level of security and managing data, not only locally, but also remotely. And it's been a, it's been a challenge early on. As I mentioned earlier, some of the first models with security were really only about uh, very basic connectivity and very basic access and security. Now they're understanding that we have to modify these initial models that we've had and really take into account all these different environments and different ways that really people are working. So it's, it's really broad, I think, from security, but certainly as an overall overarching topic, it's going to be continued to be critical with all those little nuances of what that makes it. And at, at particular to the, the cloud piece of all this, those cloud bills keep coming, right? No matter what's going on in the economy, those cloud bills keep rolling in. That's the recurring revenue the partners love so much. Is that, uh, is that just, is the growth going to be now, you think, adding additional projects, adding, make, maybe diversifying their cloud spend, where they're spending it? Is there any color you can give there on kind of what specifically is happening within cloud? Yeah, I think you're going to see, again, on-premise, you're going to see private, you're going to see public, you're going to see a combination of, of all of these things that all do need to be managed very, very effectively and proactively. And again, tying it back to security is, is going to be critical. You're also going to continue to see emerging technologies integrate within the cloud, because I think if there is any good news out of this really severe uh, tragedy around the pandemic was it forced in many cases companies to really adopt this and really begin thinking along these lines and it's making a big difference now moving forward because I think they're going to continue to have to figure out ways that I can do more with less I can be more dynamic I'm integrating in now more AI more automation into my models and I need to make sure that not only I have my regular cloud and configurations that I need but now it's pushing edge and I need more edge connectivity as well, and I need the speed and low latency that edge brings as I'm bringing in automation, as I'm bringing in more uh, more um, AI. So it's, I, I think it's just going to be a self-perpetuating thing, and you're going to see continued expansion and new use cases and new models as, uh, as we continue to evolve, because I think we're learning also quite a bit on the way. From the beginning stages of cloud, as I'd said, it was more of a pretty basic from physical to digital and, and making access available and secure remotely. And it's gone so much further than that. And, uh, and I think we're going to continue to see that, that innovation come. And that certainly brings a great opportunity uh, for the channel. So the numbers look strong, at least for cloud. But are, I'm wondering just anecdotally, if you're hearing uh, cases where some baby overspent on cloud and now need to pull that back a bit, maybe bringing things back on premise that they thought they were happy to do in the cloud and realized they weren't. Yeah, and that's and I think that's that's a fair assessment. I think what you're seeing, maybe not overspend, but I think as we're seeing this migration back to the office, I think it's reprioritizing how critical the cloud was. We're now again, it's maximizing everything from on premise to cloud, and you're going to see that spend be a little bit more diversified, and that's likely to be the case. And again, hopefully that this is where we settle in, really from a pandemic and from conditions that make it available to work in all different environments the way it is. But I think. You know, as we're seeing, this is going to come back, like in most cases, it lands somewhere in the middle. And I think you're going to need to support all models uh, through all those different things. Now, I do expect, again, as we'd mentioned, yes, 23, you're going to see some compression 
around business overall. Uh, but at the same time, again, 2024, our expectation is you're likely to see economic conditions significantly improve and you're going to see GDP numbers increase. And so really, we get through this 2023 period and it's looking even more so like it's a little bit front half loaded and it should even recover a little bit faster in the second half. And then heading into 2024, again, you're going to see economic conditions improve. Supply chain is operating significantly better than it has over the last two and a half, three years with changes of onshoring to redundancy to China plus one strategies to more regional and divisional. So you see a hybrid of all of these things really sets the table nicely for not only 2024, but then, like I said, even that acceleration um, that's really likely to occur in 2025, because you're going to have now great tailwind. You're going to have low inflation, low unemployment, an economy that's operating at full strength. You're going to have an optimized supply chain, and you've got a need to refresh with the age of some of the devices that went in early, along with the addition of that uh, sunsetting of Windows 10. So if you look at it, I don't think we've seen a convergence of all really good things that are really showing good positive momentum in, uh, in quite a while. You did also have one spot uh, within the hardware element that you thought was going to be uh, maybe doing better in 2023 than its peers, and that was healthcare. What do you expect to see there? Yeah, I mean, healthcare is an interesting one. And we saw uh, certainly with, uh, with the pandemic conditions arise, new use cases kind of evolved and opened up where it was really touchless. And you got the opportunity where you've seen now a, a significant increase in use and use cases around tablets or other devices, or again, more voice activation you've seen, more telehealth, but also just fundamentally within PCs, within hardware, um, healthcare still continues to be one of the single biggest sectors that purchase um, desktops. And so we actually saw a little bit of a rally around desktops because again, most people were operating in different circumstances than they had, and some of those purchases were put off, we're actually seeing that going to be a little bit of a rally. Uh, now, ultimately, we're still seeing that's not going to buck the trend of desktops overall long term, but certainly within those specific sectors, I think it opens up some opportunity, not only in healthcare, but also you're going to see that a little bit in, uh, in um, finance and insurance. So all in all, first half of 2023 is probably going to be the roughest go, it sounds like, for the channel. But if they can get through that, then there's a lot of upside. There really is. And, and again, it's, um, you know, it's what's what's interesting about these. I, I've done some research additionally on on recessions. And if you look at it, for the most part, they've lasted post World War Two anywhere between six and 18 months. So, again, the expectation is this shouldn't be that long in duration nor that deep relative to, to really impact. Uh, certainly going to be negative, certainly going to be challenges, but I think it should be short lived. But the nice thing in the real stat that I really like looking at is expansion post recession in the event that we actually fall in a recession there's still real opportunity to right. soft land this thing um, the expansion is anywhere between 58 and 60 months so again it sets us up very nicely so for a nice expanded growth and again with all the benefits of the the tailwind elements that i just talked about earlier i think uh, again we're really positioned uh, very well for a very strong not only a strong 24 but an even stronger 25. What's the advice then to partners on what they can do now to really position themselves uh, for strength as those upwinds uh, start to come into play? Well, a couple things, and again, partners are great at this anyway, is certainly get closer to your customer, know your customer, know the different dynamics that are going on with them right now. First things that typically happen in pre-recession or if it's gonna see an economic downturn is they're looking obviously to eliminate costs. They're gonna lean more on partners in much different ways. And so this is an opportunity that I think you can really step forward, add value as not just a, a transactional partner, but certainly a partner in building their business. So staying close, managing through those, give them some flexibility again, short term, at least around uh, where and how they can, uh, you know, have a little flexibility on pay as well as, as other things, but it really sets it up nicely. And they're going to remember this certainly as we start to see this benefit grow and climb out. The other thing is you're going to see a lot more of, especially in a in more of a, a little bit of a downturn is you're likely to see more augmentation with uh, managed resources other managed services outside the scope of what they have because again you think fundamentally um, they're going to have to do more with less so in many cases you're going to augment and you're going to fill that gap that need short term but ultimately i think it sets it up for a nice additional revenue stream 
And again, certainly expansion of the partnership as you climb out of this and, and business gets better for everybody. So th this is where the channel is really tailor made for this. It's, it's partners together in this, and I think they can add a ton of value and certainly relationships carry a ton of weight. And, and that's, that's always recognized. Uh, certainly, you know, when they need it most, you're there for them. And then ultimately when things get better and growth and expansion, uh, they're likely to benefit from that, uh, certainly. Get in now with some value-added services that people need, and then once things get better, they're unlikely to let those services go. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly Great. right. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining me today. It's good to see you as always. Great seeing you. Great talking and uh, looking forward to the next time. Thanks, Jen. Thank you.